This is Don't Stand So Close to Me from the uh, police, of course. I've been doing a lot of police lately, so I figured let's do another one, okay? So this is a pretty cool tune, and it's got a lot of little guitar bits in it, so I'm going to try to cover all of that, okay? So the first thing we hear out the gate is those bass pedals playing an E-flat to a G, which is essentially an E-flat major to a G minor which reveals itself a little bit later on. And I've actually got my top string tuned down a half step to E flat. And I play these E flat octaves to what would be a G5 on the fourth fret on the top string, the sixth string, and the fifth fret on the A string below it. And if you want to emulate that, if you've got a lot of chorusing going, which I do, and some delay, you can just kind of do that for fun. Bring your, uh, your output down on your guitar, just kind of crazy cool fun stuff and the first thing we hear Andy play is this which I've got tabbed out for you it's just kind of a free form sort of uh, up in the air thing And then the bass pedals start moving between that E flat and that G rapidly. And then we hear Andy play. which he does two times. So what he's doing is he's playing these reggae-based chords, E flat, which you can see on the screen, to G minor up here. And he plays that twice on those upbeats. One, and two, and three, and four, and. But if you notice, he enters it by sort of sliding off of the G minor first. And then we are officially into the tune for the first verse, and he's playing this cool little staccato thing. So you want some definite muting back here, uh, palm muting, and I think all downstrokes for this part probably works the best. And you'll do that like eight times before we dip into the chorus. And I think the chorus is probably the biggest mystery on this song. You know, exactly what did Andy play? So I'm going to try to break it down for you uh, as close to the way he plays it as possible. But keeping in mind that if you pull up videos of him playing it live, He's always got variations going on, okay? So I'll try to show you as close to the studio recording as possible and explain also what he does live uh, here and there. Now, when they played this live, Andy would use the uh, Roland guitar synth, which was pretty revolutionary at the time. And if you watch videos of them playing this tune live, you will definitely see him playing those minor sevenths and pulling that index finger off, or in this case, the second finger off. Uh, but do check that out, and you can see that that's what he's doing. What's kind of interesting about it is that he's actually playing this a whole step up while Sting is playing it in the natural tuning. So obviously he's retuned the uh, guitar synth for whatever purposes. But that is the way he plays the riff. So let me break that down for you. Uh, there are variations in it. He's not super what you call exactly the same or precise every time he does it, but uh, he's pretty close. And again, you can see these fingerings uh, in live videos with him. <laughs> So 
let's take a look at it. Basically, what's happening is the bass is moving from D to A, and he's emulating that on the guitar. So I'm barring across the seventh fret on the D string, the G string, and the D string. And again, he plays it, you know, there's subtle differences in it, the way he plays it each time, particularly in the picking hand. But you definitely want some heavy muting back here, so you're muting the strings. And uh, what I do is I hit the D and the G, and then the G and the B. So you get that and then back, which you can really hear on the studio recording. And then you form an A triad, and then when you form that, pick the G and the B string twice, and then pick the D and the G string twice. And that is essentially what he's doing, which you can see on the tab, but hopefully that explanation really helps out a bit. twice and then we come down to a B minor seventh chord which you can see on the screen and if you watch Andy play this live you can see his right hand is just constantly moving he doesn't stop he keeps everything uh, flowing so you can take note of that if you watch him play it live and this is all downstrokes of course so once again we have the B minor seventh chord I kind of hit the bass note or the two uh, lowest notes in the chord first, followed by the chord, and then the second finger comes off. Swing back though, play it like this. Hit the bass note, follow through with the chord, swing back. Take that finger off for three strokes. Just like that. So we have... takes it down to an A minor 7th. Once again, you can see the chord on the screen, but it's the same idea, same uh, rhythmic pattern in the right hand, and the first finger will come off. Just like that. And make sure you follow through and get all those strings in there, because you can really hear that E string come through on the recording. on that second one uh, I played the A minor twice okay so you repeat all of that again of course and uh, when you get to the last chorus before the breakdown uh, where Andy brings in the guitar synth which we'll talk about in a second when you get there you play that A minor seventh chord four times <laughs> synth part which is essentially an E flat major chord to a G minor chord okay and if you want to do that it's probably best to be uh, in your natural tuning although you can play it like that okay so I've got the uh, fourth fret on the uh, sixth string and then five and five with my ring finger on my pinky on the next two strings and then just bar across the whole thing and again, if you've got some healthy chorusing and, and uh, a long delay going on, you can do this. And while that's going on, you're still hearing... mess around with all of these ideas if uh, you want to play it okay but there's another guitar part that you hear coming in while this is going on as well out okay so that's a cool little part that he kind of brings in 
before they hit that chorus running again. So just a few of the uh, various little uh, nuances that Andy added to this track. So there you go with Don't Stand So Close to Me from The Police, and uh, we'll have some more coming up very soon.